Thanks, Emma. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, turning up today. Really appreciate it. I just want to introduce uh, a couple of uh, my deputy chiefs who are here uh, with me. Deputy Chief Raj Gill is to my right, uh, probably your left, and Deputy Chief Chad Tofik is to my left uh, as well. Uh, Deputy Chiefs Cook and McClellan were not available today. Uh, there's been a lot of commentary regarding the thin blue line insignia since March 30th when the CPC announced their decision to disallow wearing the symbol on police uniforms. I was away from the city on business last week when the information was released, and so to an extent, I was relegated to monitoring and managing the announcement of a very important issue at a distance. After returning to the city on the weekend, I had an opportunity to speak with all of the key stakeholders and to get up to speed with what was going on. I wanted to hold this availability to speak to the community and to our officers about this issue, as I know that it's extremely, extremely important to them. This is a very complicated situation, like most things, way more complex than it would appear at the surface. And I don't have to tell anybody that complex things have become even more complicated during the pandemic. I don't want this to be reduced to simple sound bites because that would never do this topic justice. I want to make sure that each of you has the opportunity to ask any questions you may want to ask so that you have as much clarity as you possibly can as you write or report on this topic. Let me start by addressing those who say, well, Chief, the, CBC, or the CPC has provided you with direction and you're not following it. The CPC did provide valid policy direction to me, and it's certainly within their purview to do so. And I certainly acknowledge my responsibility to implement that direction. When it comes to the what or the decision, they hand that direction off to me. And then when it comes to the implementation or the how, that falls to me to do as part of my responsibilities to administer the police service. Their communications did include a date for sure, it was March 31st, 2022, which no doubt would have set expectations in the minds of many. However, the timeline wasn't a realistic one, given the size and nature of our service. And what I'm talking about is the number of people who are on duty and off duty that work nights and days and, and different shift patterns and that sort of thing. And, and even more probably specifically, the significance of this particular decision on our people. Of course, the Commission's guidance on potential timelines also didn't take into account the reaction that the decision prompted from our associations, the Calgary Police Association and the Senior Officers Association. I'm sure you'd agree that this uh, has significantly complicated any plans for implementation of uh, this particular policy decision. In terms of the response that we saw from our unions, I would characterize this as extraordinary. The leaders of our unions and their executive boards are not anti-management and they're not disruptor types. Uh, predisposed to this sort of action. In fact, I would say they're anything but that. The steps they've taken should signal to all of you, as it did to me, that something out of the ordinary was going on here. We all realize that symbols are powerful and deeply meaningful. The thin blue line symbol has been around for a long, long time in police culture, and not just here in Calgary, but globally. To the members of the Calgary Police Service, the thin blue line symbolizes honor for the fallen, service to our community, and support for one another. One thing I've learned about the culture of CPS and something that I, I would tell you that I take pride in is that when it comes to uh, our commitment to honor those that have been uh, died in the serving Calgarians in the line of duty, our service is second to none. We've had 12 officers lose their lives in the line of duty going back to 1917. So we pause internally on the anniversary date of those deaths each year to remember those officers. What's more, family and colleagues often attend our, fa our facilities to reconnect and to remember. That was our commitment to those families, and therefore, it's our duty. Our members continue to feel the pain of the on-duty murder of Sergeant Andrew Harnett back on December 31st, 2020. We continue to support Andrew's family, his friends, his colleagues, and his infant son as those charged with that murder move through the court system. So you can get some sense of how important we take the honor the fallen aspect of the thin blue line symbol. With respect to service to the community, it has long been the hallmark of the Calgary Police Service, uh, our community-based policing model here in Calgary. We love supporting our community. Our members came to the service to serve the community. They value the community deeply and the community values them back. In terms of the supporting one another, I'm not sure if the importance of that aspect of it could ever be stronger than it is today. It's been a difficult time to be a police officer and sometimes uh, a thankless time. The amazing men and women of our service continue to show up in our communities in support of them in every hour of every day, time after time after time. Police officers through the thin blue line share a common bond 
by virtue of the unique roles they play in our society. If you're asking what happened, I would say that our members were quite frankly incensed by the decision. Anytime you feel like something like this is thrust upon you, a defensive reaction is not a surprising reaction, especially around topics that go right to the level of your values and right to the heart of your identity. Add to that the difficulties our officers have faced in terms of staffing shortages, morale, COVID-19 enforcement, countless protests and demonstrations, and a return to normal patterns of crime and disorder around our city. We have a tired and frustrated workforce, and as I've said, morale is at an all-time low. Removing patches from the uniforms is one thing, but completely vilifying the symbol and its meaning to our people, which has been, which has been communicated, is uh, very much another. I believe we saw a reference to the thin blue line uh, being referred to as a known hate symbol with a history of hateful hearts and hateful deeds. Those comments were incendiary. In around 2000, cyclist Lance Armstrong wrote a book and the book was called, It's Not About the Bike. Cycling was really a metaphor for his own personal battle with cancer. In this case, having got back to the city of Calgary and speaking to members of the, uh, the unions and other stakeholders involved, I've indeed learned that this situation is not about the bike and it's not about the patch, at least not fully. Our employees are very concerned about the current state of the important relationship that must exist between the Calgary Police Commission and our service. They feel that a number of issues have been raised but not acknowledged, and we have progressively moved down a road where goodwill has become in short supply. And the most recent decision in relation to the thin blue line was the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. The good news in all of this, I can say, is that in my conversations with key stakeholders uh, since Sunday, there is a strong desire to come to, the, to come to the table and get together to discuss issues that have been raised. If we can do that, I believe that the patches will come off uniforms voluntarily. No, CPS is not an ungovernable organization. It's a nationally recognized leader in policing and public safety. We have great people who care deeply for this community and they do so, so much in support of it. They are committed to providing quality and equitable police service to all communities and they do that very well. What you see or what you're seeing is an existing conflict that has been unresolved and it's boiled over. I ask the community for your patience and continued support while we work through these issues, these important issues. In the meantime, we continue to respect the important governance role of the CPC and from an internal perspective, every officer remains fully committed to providing you with the same quality of service you've come to expect here in Calgary. I'll turn it over now to you for any questions you might have. Thanks, Chief. We'll start off with Tyson Fedor from CTV. Tyson, go ahead. Chief, thanks for uh, taking our questions and addressing this today. I know there's uh, many people interested in the community uh, with this. Uh, you mentioned uh, many of the members were incensed by uh, this decision made by the commission uh, just last week. Um, what have you been hearing from those members and maybe their reluctance to, to do such a thing? And you mentioned uh, the timeline was just one that was just not uh, something that you could get members to do by a certain time. So is that a decision that uh, you're looking at to maybe find a new timeline for this? Uh, yes, for sure. Thanks, Tyson. Uh, so I've put the uh, implementation of uh, the decision on pause for two weeks initially. Um, during that period of time, we're going to engage with our employees. I think it's really important, you know, to apply some a, a little bit uh, higher measure of change management and to engage folks so we can understand what was going on. I think during the initial conversations, what's, what's clear here is that, you know, you might think that this was just about the patch and people being angry about the patch, but I actually think if some of the underlying issues uh, get addressed, then we're having a much different conversation about whether you know the patch belongs on a police uniform. The challenge is, I think, the underlying things that, that people are feeling frustrated about. And just a quick follow up in regards to that. So you, you mentioned that more dialogue needs to, to happen here. Uh, this decision, do you think this is a, a kind of a bit of a slap in the face from the commission uh, to a lot of your members to, to force this so quickly? Well, I, I certainly think that it's perceived that way. Uh, I think the, the opportunity probably exists for us to be able to come together uh, and engage the employees a little bit more. I think what they're interested in is what the commission is hearing and what the basis of the decision has been. We were engaged, I think you'll remember over a year ago, um, we, the commission raised this issue in March of uh, 2021. 
and I'd committed at that time to engaging uh, community locally around this issue. And I, I, would, I would say that we received a considerable amount of support from community through that process. And so when we came back to the commission, I, I know there continued to be some concerns uh, expressed. And again, I think the members would just like to understand uh, more clearly sort of where some of that is coming from and how you know we've seemed to have gotten to a couple of different conclusions in relation to uh, the consultation. Thanks, Chief, and thanks, Tyson. The next question is from Carrie Tate. Carrie, go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, so the commission has put out this uh, dictate and they are the civilian oversight. A uniform is a uniform. It's, that's, it's right there in the name. It is supposed to be uniform. Why are you um, not enforcing um, what essentially your bosses have told you to do? Yeah, so uh, Carrie, thanks. So I am going to enforce what my boss has told me to do, of course. Um, I acknowledge that right up front. I think it's interesting because I've said the same thing about the uniform being the uniform. And so I think you can look at that in a, in a number of different ways. I think you can, if you're more of a traditionalist, you can apply sort of a clean uniform policy, uh, you know, to that and say, you know, nothing should be on the uniform. And that's why they call it a uniform. At the same time, you know, I think we live in a very diverse uh, community here in Calgary and it's becoming more diverse. And so, you know, we have a number of different uh, approved insignia that we wear on uniforms now. Uh, and that supports the, you know, the LGBTQ community. We support the indigenous community with, uh, you know, orange ribbons, uh, the moose hide campaign, uh, the red dress uh, campaign. We have anti-bullying campaigns. We actually support, um, domestic violence prevention month, these types of things, right? And so, and I think those are all very valid things uh, to be supporting. But I think at the same time, you know, the membership looks at that and they say, well, why is it inappropriate to support the things that are that are the most dear to us as well? So this is some of the dialogue about, uh, about you know, what's going on with the uniform, like you say. And so, you know, like I say, in a diverse community, the notion of uniform, um, you know, I, I think can take on a, a, a various different, um, um, connotations or various different forms. Thanks, uh, that was helpful. Um, I'm wondering, you talk about how um, the police officers view the thin blue line very differently than um, the way that the commission has put it to you. Does it concern you that some of the officers may not see why people, um, some people are fearful of the thin blue line or, um, get their backs up on that. Yes, yeah, for sure. It does concern me. Um, the issue of though, you know, to, to look at the other side of that is that our officers are deeply involved with uh, all communities here in Calgary. And so what they say is, is similar to what we heard in our consultations is that that wasn't what they were hearing. And, you know, I'm trying to resolve uh, the issue that I've got even internally with our internal anti-racism committee, which, um, you know, is comprised of a number of different members and some from racialized communities. And so we have we have members of the service who are from racialized communities themselves, uh, as well as um, civilian members who have who've come forward saying this is not representative of, of what my community thinks um, of the thin blue line. And so it, it is difficult to uh, to try to, I think, uh, reconcile uh, the various different um, perspectives on it. And I think that's for us to do here now and when we're discussing uh, some of the issues and how we got here. Thanks, Kerry. Next question is from Dylan Short from Post Media. Go ahead, Dylan. Hi, thanks for taking my question. I guess, you know, you mentioned that you're not hearing so much from, from a number of communities that, that the thin blue line is an issue, but clearly there are people out there that, that see it as the way it's been described that, that you say was incendiary, you know, a hate crime or sorry, hate symbol, that, all that sort of stuff. There's clearly people that see it that way. Otherwise, we all wouldn't be here today. You spoke a lot about, you know, delaying the implementation and sort of making remarks of, of patience towards your officers and making an understanding. What would you say to the individuals that do see this as a problematic symbol, uh, you know, the Calgarians that see it as a problematic symbol? Yeah, I, I would say that I would love to uh, have the opportunity to engage a little bit more. And we're doing that now, uh, reaching out to some of those folks, actually. But, le but let me be, cl be clear. This isn't about trying to usurp the commission's direction or, uh, or um, you know, retain the symbol uh, in that sense. It's actually about looking at some of the underlying issues that uh, have led uh, members 
to this becoming the straw that broke the camel's back. Those are probably the more important issues. So uh, certainly we, we are going to continue to uh, engage with folks who want to talk about the symbol. Uh, and yes, I am concerned about those things, but, but those are not the main issues that, uh, that uh, the stakeholders here are looking to uh, resolve. Do you have a follow-up question, Dylan? Yeah, thanks. Just you've mentioned the underlying issues a few times. I just want to be clear on what exactly you're speaking about to there. So could you provide a little more detail on, on you know, these underlying issues that you speak of? Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to be quite general, uh, Dylan, because we're certainly going to, out of respect for the commission, we're going to um, deal with those things. But when I talked about the hateful um, symbol, the known hate symbol and the hateful hearts and hateful deeds, that's a quote from a member of the Calgary Police Commission. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, next question goes to Adam Toy at Global. Adam, go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, wondering, the police commission cited, I believe, a police association survey in which uh, a quarter of the respondents viewed the thin blue line symbol as negative. You're seeking further consultation uh, and engagement. I'm just wondering uh, uh, what, uh, what kind of proportions you're looking for in terms of people to uh, uh, agree or approve with the symbol or disagree uh, with the symbol. Um, I'm wondering if you can uh, provide a bit more, more clarity on that. Yeah, thanks, Adam. So we went through and did uh, our consultation there with our, um, our uh, diversity advisory boards and our anti-racism uh, advisory committees, both internally and externally. So that was our consultation process. Uh, you're right. I think there is a uh, the uh, police commission or the police association may have done a survey of their own. I've not seen that survey, so I, I can't speak to that one. And just to be clear, I'm not looking for actively going out to consult more people. I'm simply saying if there's folks that uh, that want to uh, engage in relation to that, there we're certainly open to that. Uh, but we we went through an exhaustive uh, consultation period there. Uh, and so, you know, we're, we're pleased with where we got to. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, as I've said before, the, you know, the commission has made a decision. And, and so we respect the decision that's been made. Um, the thin blue lines that you're seeing and the, and the response to that decision is, is not all about the thin blue line. Follow up, Adam? Uh, yes. Um, it, the police commission has said that it's willing to engage with all of the relevant parties to find and create a replacement symbol for the thin blue line, something that uh, obviously replaces it. Wondering if uh, what your perspective is on the potential for uh, something that can carry the same meaning, but doesn't look exactly the same. I know you said that this isn't about the symbol, but there seems to be a, an appetite to replace it. Wondering if what, you, what your perspective is on that. Yeah, so I, th I think it's a possibility uh, uh, for sure. Uh, from my perspective, I would say that what I've heard from some of the stakeholders is that the, the the challenge is that the relationships of trust aren't there right now to go down that road. And so again, I think that points to you know the stakeholders coming together to to look at resolving some of those particular issues, um, and so that actually maybe it would be more likely that we could go down that road. So that's what I'm hearing from them. And so I think I think it's a definite possibility. But again, I think uh, you know steps to resolve those underlying issues are. Um, are uh, probably the first step. Thank you. The next question comes from Aaron Collins from CBC. Go ahead, Aaron. Unmute. There. Thanks for taking my question. Um, you, you mentioned a two-week pause on implementing, um, you know, removal of these patches. I'm, I'm curious what happens then. I mean, do you have a plan for enforcing this? Are you? I mean, if if you have members that decide that two weeks isn't enough, and, the, and this is a hill that they're willing to you know, um, you know, put their flag into or what have you, like what, what, what comes next? Yeah, it's a great, great question. I think we're on two concurrent roads here right now. And the first one is we're moving forward with the implementation of the commission's direction, um, you know, which is proper. And then on the other side, we're actually having, uh, arranging and brokering conversations uh, between the parties so that we can actually get to a place where, you know, ideally we would come to voluntary compliance and, you know, the patches would come off on their own because folks were happy with uh, other changes that had been made. I think that, uh, you know, the big thing is I've seen in the, in the media people saying, well, you know, Chief, why don't you just, you know, go and, and hammer everybody and uh, use the discipline um, tool. And I, I think, you know what, that's kind of a draconian way to go. Uh, when you appreciate, as I've said, how important this symbol is to members of the Calgary Police Service and the actions, I think the response that was that was uh, 
evoked here is such that you have to step back and say, okay, something's going on. And so, as I say, in my conversations with the stakeholders, it's clear that, that something is in fact going on. And so um, I think, I think focusing on those types of things uh, would probably, will probably get us to a better place. I think if we were to try to go down the road of, um, of the discipline route right away, uh, you know, the challenges you have is you might be able to get uh, begrudging compliance, but we're actually looking for cooperation and commitment because once this is over, we have to go back to the important work that we're doing of, of uh, that's ongoing of uh, policing in the city. And so, like I say, this is one of these things that becomes quite a considerable distraction in the context of everything our members are doing and, and all the issues that are facing Calgarians. Darren, do you have a follow up? Yeah, I do. Just more of a, I guess, a clarification. And so if, if I'm understanding what you're saying, you're, you're hopeful that over the coming two weeks, you'll be able to sort this out amicably. But I guess back to the original question, if that doesn't work, are you talking about suspensions without pay are you are you are, what are the weapons in your arsenal and do you do you expect you may have to to use them with with some outliers yeah yeah i mean it's possible at, at the end of the day this is not about weaponizing anything this is about trying to use uh you know respect and compassion and and work with our employees who we respect and value uh, you know, to get, uh, move this to a better place. And I'm, I'm confident we can do that. But obviously, if we're not able to do that, we'll have to look at uh, the next steps. But I think uh, in the short term, um, that's, that's not something that you'll see. Thanks, Aaron. Chief, the next question is from Colleen Underwood from CBC. Colleen, go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, I, I kind of had the same question as other people have had. So forgive me if I ask it again, but I'm just trying to get a sense of, so this underlying, um, the boiling over the um, animosity that's been building, that's with, um, that's just over this issue? Or is there, because you mentioned that the some of the concerns were over the hateful symbol comments coming from the commission. So are the concerns just basically over this issue or are there other problems that have come up? No, it's not just over this issue, Colleen. I would say that, um, you know, we're in a situation now where our members are paying uh, very close attention to the social media accounts of, uh, of individual councillors and the quantity of uh, anti-police um, content that's being sort of posted, shared or liked is, is really causing concern to the members. Uh, oftentimes, I think we talk with uh, commission and so we hear the voice of commission and the direction of commission, and then we'll hear different things after. And the feeling of the membership is that there are, there are individual agendas that are being pursued that are, that are maybe overshadowing the larger governance role. And that in effect, uh, the effect of all of that is that it is uh, eroding trust and confidence in the police service here in the city, which is the exact opposite of what uh, the, the commission exists to do. Do you have a follow-up, Colleen? Yeah, just again on the two week um, plan. So the fact that you're pausing it today, you're just announcing that right now. And so, but obviously people can continue to um, take the patch off. It's just, you're taking this time to meet with, when you say stakeholders, do you mean members and the commission? Yeah, so really I'm speaking about the, uh, the commission as well as the uh, members of the unions, the two unions who have, uh, who have reacted to the thin blue line. So, I mean, as you'll know, we probably had, you know, thousands of patches and pins distributed to uh, members of the police service after uh, this decision was announced. So that certainly, uh, uh, you know, makes for a significant challenge when you're actually trying to, um, you know, gain voluntary compliance around removing what was initially a small number of patches uh, and now now has become a large number of patches. Can I just ask one more thing, just based on what you've said, do you think there's a better way this could have been handled? Well, you know what, I think, you know, it, it's, it's not about laying blame, Colleen, but I think when you look at this, there's always a better way that things could be handled. I think part of the problem is here during COVID, I think, you know, we've not even be able, been able to have um, um, you know, face-to-face -face meetings with the commission. We've got commission members, frankly, that we've never, never met in person. And so I think that has strained relationships. 
I think, you know, if there's an opportunity to engage the membership uh, more so through things like town halls and that type of thing. Uh, but again, during COVID, you couldn't do those sorts of things. And so I, th I think there's been a number of challenges along the way. So yes, I do think that it could be handled differently. But, but I also think that this is so deeply personal to uh, members of the service that, uh, you know, given, you, given the sting of the murder of Sergeant Harnett, which is still, you know, very, very relevant and, and very real, um, you know, I just don't know that it was that it was going to be a good thing. And that's not to say that it's not it's not within the commission's wheelhouse. But, you know, it was going to be a hard road. I think uh, no matter what we we certainly, uh, you know, predicted that. And here we are. We're on it now. And so we'll manage it. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Colleen. Uh, Chief, we have a couple of people have come back around in the queue if you're OK with that. So we have Dylan Short at Post Media um, with a follow up. Go ahead, Dylan. Yeah, thanks so much for, for coming back around. It, this goes off of what you, you just said there, Chief, that, you know, obviously one of the unions has been accused of handing out countless numbers of pins. And you said it was a, a small number of officers wearing the thin blue line that has now blossomed into a bunch. That's sort of open defiance to, to you know, and this has been pointed out quite a bit over the last few days of the, the oversight body. So I guess just how much of an issue is is that to you that, that we now have, you know, through the union, open defiance from officers on, on the directives that were given. Well, I think you certainly, it's certainly reflective of the frustration that exists. There's no question about that. Uh, as I say, though, having come back to Calgary on the weekend and having connected with folks, I do see that it's not, like I say, these are not folks that are predisposed to, uh, you know, trying to cause problems. These are, you know, these are leaders who have identified specific issues that they would like to address, and they're willing to come forward and do that. And so I think that's really good. Um, you know, yes, we are seeing a, what I would say is sort of a labor action in response to the initial, um, you know, announcement of the decision. But again, I'm pleased to say that there's, you know, folks that are engaged and want to come to the table to work through this. And so I think I think that's a good thing. And I think we should allow time for that to happen. Thanks, Dylan. We have another follow up from Tyson Fedor at CTV. Tyson, go ahead. Chief, just a quick one here. Of the uh, 1,900 uniformed officers or so on the street, do you know how many at this point have already voluntarily taken this patch off at this point? I, I don't. Um, you know, I have to tell you what I was concerned about, Tyson, was the fact that with, you know, there certainly was a, an increased number of people who decided to put it on um, as a result of this. And what I didn't want to see happen was for there to be, you know, discord within our organization, because if there's folks that didn't put it on, then what did that mean? And so the potential for, I think, uh, conflict about, uh, you know, the choices where people were making inside the organization was very real. Um, so that's one of the reasons, too, why I wanted to put this on pause to say, you know, for the next couple of weeks, uh, we're not going to be initiating disciplinary uh, proceedings. We are going to be engaging with our folks, treating them with respect, and then also allowing time for those uh, discussions to uh, move forward. Uh, and like I say, uh, the underlying issues are important issues. We respect the important role of the Calgary Police Commission. Um, we just want to make sure that there's respect shown for the Calgary Police Service also, uh, and that we're not, uh, we're not uh, eroding uh, public trust and confidence in the, in the police service here in our city. Thanks, Chief. And we have one final question uh, back around to Carrie Tate. Go ahead, Carrie. Hi, thanks again. Chief, you had mentioned that some of your individual members had been closely watching social media accounts of specific counselors and that there's a feeling of individual agendas were getting in the way rather than governance. And that was all stirring the pot here. Why does that matter? I mean, the police officers are supposed to be doing a job, not necessarily. Um, letting kind of the buzz around them affect their job? Yeah, thank you. Great question, Kerry. So yeah, I, I don't disagree. Uh, I think we're all human, though. I think it's sometimes hard to um, avoid the buzz. But but I think, you know, the, the larger question here is um, when the quality of the interactions with some of the commissioners are such that it forces you to question whether or not they could possibly be objective with respect to very important questions around, you know, crime prevention programs and public safety here in Calgary. Um, you know, we've seen some things come out on social media that that you just think like, wow, can this possibly be OK? Um, and so it's to the point now where the buzz has grown into something louder than a buzz to the point that uh, we have and I, I couldn't even put a number on this, but we have a large number of employees who are logging on to listen to what's happening in the dialogue uh, at the police commission meetings. 
And so there is a there is a very strong interest in what's happening and a very strong uh, undercurrent in the organization about frustration with the state of the relationship. And that's why it's really important that we we prioritize this. Like I say, I, ca I cannot be more clear. I fully support the Calgary Police Commission. I fully support uh, the role of the commission in terms of governance and oversight. And I believe, I've said many times, we're fortunate here in Alberta and Canada to have a system that we do where we actually have that, uh, that layer of civilian oversight. But you know, when, when, it, when it works, it's good. And when there are challenges, everybody has to be able to come to the table uh, and be able to identify those issues in order to make it better so we can reduce these frustrations. And like I say, the biggest thing that we, we cannot have because nobody's here to, to have that is to basically have you know, individual agendas pursued that end up having an impact on the, the morale of our officers, the, uh, the public safety here in, in uh, the city of Calgary, uh, and public trust and confidence in the police. Uh, that's, that's really, really important. And everybody ought to be committed to that. Chief, on that topic, I, I fib to you. We have one final question from Dylan Short. He wanted to ask about the recent um, violent incidents in the city. Are you, would you mind taking a question from Dylan, uh, either yourself or Deputy Tofik? Dylan, go ahead. Hi, yeah, thanks again. Uh, I just wanted to grab your reaction or general thoughts on, you know, six homicides in the past two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Obviously not, not a normal couple weeks. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. I might turn you over to uh, Deputy Tofik, who can probably speak to it uh, better than I. Uh, I was away last week, uh, certainly uh, aware of the issues, but don't necessarily have the details. But, but let me just say this too: the amount of time that has gone into dealing with uh, issues around um, the thin blue line and this type of thing do take away from the ability to stay on top of uh, of critical issues here in the city. And so, I mean, that's that's one of the things. If we can get focused back on um, on uh, some of the really important operational issues, uh, that will help us also. Thanks, Chief, and thanks, Dylan, for the question. Yeah, certainly, it's a very concerning for us uh, from a CPS perspective about the number of homicides over the last few weeks. Uh, we have been working all those cases very diligently, as mentioned in several media releases as well and working towards uh, closure on all of those. So uh, certainly concerning something we're focusing on and paying attention to and taking every step we can to bring uh, uh, closure to the victims, families and, and everyone around it. So, uh, but we are uh, working diligently on every tip we have and charges have been uh, laid on a number of them. Thanks, Deputy Topic. Thank you to the media and everyone for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Take care.